Okay, so for those of you who don't know me, I'm Lewis and uh, I prefer to talk as little as possible. So if we're gonna learn something here, I'm gonna count on a lot of questions and interaction. Um, that would be great. So what we're gonna talk about at, at this session is our, um, our research project that we've been doing for a couple of years on precision planters and canola um, versus, so precision planters versus an air drill. Um, so any ideas, you know, to start with, why, why would we be looking into precision planters and, and canola? What, what benefits might, might they have over an air drill? Better germination. Better germination. What's that? Lower seed cost. Yeah. So why, what, what might cause those things? Why, why would we maybe see better germination um, or be able to do, you know, lower seed rates with a, with a planter? I care depth. Depth, yeah, that's a big one for sure. Uh, what else? What what other benefit as far as seed placement goes with the planter? So seed contact. Yeah, yeah. Spacing. Spacing, yeah. So really, it's it's all about the seed placement. That's that's really the advantage that the that the planters have um, for, for everything, right? So you have that that singulation where you know each seed is is dropped every three inches, every two inches, every whatever, right? So that's that's kind of a huge advantage. Uh, as far as allotting each seed, you know, its own range of resources. Um, so you have the longest amount of time possible before those plants start competing with each other. So the idea is it's going to sort of have less, um, less attrition, less competition among, among your uh, canola plants. And then the other side of it would be uh, the depth control. So we have a lot better depth control with the planter than, than we do with the air drill. And um, what that does is kind of helps us have a more uniform emergence of our, of our canola plants. So everything's sort of at the same stage at the same time. Uh, and there's a lot of benefits to that um, from, you know, you've sort of narrow up that disease window a little bit, right? Rather than having, you know, some, some at this stage and then, you know, it takes four weeks for everything to sort of get to, through that sort of critical, um, critical phase. You've sort of got that blocked off in a 10 day span or something because everything's sort of at the same stage. Um, I suspect there's benefits to pollination. That's not really within my expertise. Um, and then for harvest as well. So you're thinking of a whole field. You know, one of the things that can be challenging with canola is, you know, when do we, when do we spray it? You know, when do we um, swath it? You know, you've got some that are, you know, everything's turned brown and everything, and then you've got other ones that are still just getting into flower, right? So if everything can sort of be at the same stage, um, I think there's a lot of potential benefits on the field scale side of things. So when we started this project, really we wanted to look at, yeah, do these benefits hold true? You know, we've kind of heard the stories, you know, planters have all these benefits um, tied to seed placement. So depth control and the singulation, you know, the, the spacing of the seeds. Uh, so what we did was we, we had three different basic treatments. Um, we had an air drill on nine and a half inch rows and then we had a monosem vacuum planter. That's that, that blue unit over there. I don't know if you've been to Ken or not, but I think he's gonna, so he probably talked about it quite a bit already. Um, so we, we set that on 20 inch rows, which is sort of what you'd have, um, you know, for a more conventional row crop. So corn would be grown on maybe 30 or 20 inch rows. So we wanted to sort of try that direct um, transfer to, to canola. And then we did a third treatment that was on, on narrower 12 inch rows, um, just to see, you know, 20 is pretty wide for canola. You know, it takes a little bit longer to get that canopy closure. So we wanted to test the narrower rows. So the first trial we did was a seeding rate trial. So we looked at a bunch of different seed rates, um, anywhere between, so our lowest was about, I mean, we always talk in seeds per meter squared because pounds per acre can kind of vary depending on kernel weight, but um, our lowest was 20 seeds a meter squared. So we did 20, 40, 60, 80, and then 160, um, which, corresponds roughly to, so this low one here is about a little bit under a pound an acre. And then the next three are say one and a half, two and a half, three and a half. And then the highest is right around seven pounds an acre. So any ideas, what, any guesses what the, what seeding rate sort of worked out the best for us? Three and a half. Three and a half. Any other guesses? 2.7. Oh, wow. That's very specific. Um, Kind of a trick question because there wasn't really any that worked the best. So we, we went into this study and, and we were really expecting to see, you know, something jump out and, and, and to see maybe a different ideal seeding rate for, 
um, the different the different planters. But what we found was anything between that, you know, two to four and a half pounds an acre was all pretty comparable and was all kind of the best treatments. But what really jumped out was the differences between the cedars. Uh, so that the monosem, the, the planter on, on 12 inches, uh, yielded about 15% better than the other two on in the first two years of the study now. So that's a pretty significant um, yield difference. So we're, we're pretty excited about it. We're cautiously optimistic and we've made a few changes to, to our protocols every year to try to flesh out anything that might be you know an external influence that we're not not thinking about but um, I think there's a, a, a ton of uh, potential and opportunity there so so if we kind of go through the plots here so we've got the first five plots are are you know 20 40 60 80 and 160 seeds per meter squared with the monosem on 12 inches um, again this was kind of our, our best performer um, so one thing we found was from an emergence standpoint, so we've kind of gone in and done plant counts sort of every two weeks from initial, um, initial emergence. So once everything's kind of up and we're doing about 10% better with the planter than the, uh, than the air drill, which not a huge difference, but big enough. Um, what, kind, what kind of emergence do you think you would be getting on your canola? Anybody? 60. 60. 60 is probably a pretty good number. Yeah, I think I think a lot of people are, you know, in the 40 to 50 range. Like canola is kind of notorious for that, you know, the poor emergence. Um, so kind of cool to get a little bit of a boost, you know, 10% on the, on, the, on the planter. But then when we did our counts again, say a month or, yeah, a month or six weeks in, when everything's sort of at that six leaf stage, um, we're getting our survival's about 20% better on the on the monosem than it is on the air drill. So again, um, you know, you're because everything is sort of well placed and at the same stage, you're getting a lot less competition between those plants. Um, so again, pretty excited about that, and that's probably all what's working together to sort of get that that yield boost. So are you looking at relativity or, like you said, uh, emergence rates, right? <laughs> and then is is that? Mortality rates are calculated. Okay, so emergence, we're talking what percent of the seed that came we seeded came ground. out of the ground. Yeah, that's yeah. so it's just yeah. emergence. Yeah, and then, then I look at survivability. Yeah, because emergence is one thing. because yeah. it could die down there. Yeah, before we see it, then we can have, you know, the holy grail of frost or flea beetle or yeah, pestilence comes in. So when then we have to measure survivability. Yeah, I'm not really concerned. I'm I'm checking how many seeds do I harvest. Yeah. And if you do that calculation religiously, yeah. uh, most canola growers, John, you would quit if you ever count because you're throwing 600, excess of 600,000 seeds out per acre in your seeding rates. And when you come back there at harvest, this, the fields I see, we're rarely getting over 350,000. Yeah. So and you paid me. Half of them out again the next year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Eh? So you paid me 650 bucks for a bag of seed. And I gladly took your money. Thank you very much. You grew all of it, put it in the ground. Half of it died, and that's what you harvested. And you're happy with that. You should have heard what I said behind your back. Though. <laughs> <laughs> but, I, but I'm disgusted. Like, what the hell happened between the trip where we put it in the ground and you harvested it? Survivability to that point, we're barely scratching to 50% at best. Yeah. 40% lots of time. And I took your money. You should be royally pissed off. And that's why you said behind my back. My goal is why don't we just give you 375,000, get our mortality rates down to 8%, 11%, and then take all those seeds to harvest, and then that's my crop. I've saved money, and I haven't taken the money from you on the front end, and you still got the same crop in the end. Less die. Yeah, this that's, doesn't really do that because we're counting the steps in between we're not jumping ahead to the yield Lewis is that uh, well, well we'll get to that yeah okay. yeah but um, but I mean to your point we're definitely getting better better emergence uh, not 90% emergence but we're getting better emergence and we're getting even better survival so more more a higher percentage of a significant what well, 10% more seeds are kind of getting out of the ground and about 20% more seeds are becoming, getting to that sort of six leaf stage, right? Um, especially on, the, on that uh, 12 inch rows. Because again, when you think about the difference between the 12 and the 20 inch rows, 
Um, you know, when you've got the 20 inch rows across the whole field, because there's fewer rows, you've got to pack a lot more resources in each of those rows. So a little more fertilizer and a little more seed per row. So we have a not quite as good survival on those wide rows. And, and they probably take a little bit longer to get that canopy closure. So you've got that bare soil exposed a little bit longer. So you're lo maybe losing a little bit moisture. You're losing a little bit of um, solar energy and, and maybe some nutrients too. So um, yeah, so this, this is the 12 inch. So this was kind of our best performing. Um, now if we go to the 20 inch row, so again, we've got more plants per row. So they sort of, in general, they kind of look a little bit better, but we know that as things go on, there's going to be a little bit more competition between the plants on these wider rows because they're just so much closer together. And then as time goes on, they're, they're going to take a little bit longer to get that canopy closure. Um, and then here on that, what's that? What, what's TSW? Oh, uh, be about five, five grams or something. I don't, I don't know exactly. Um, no, it, I think it was 4.9. I think it was that uh, M35 stuff. So. so then finally we'll go to that air seeder here, um, sort of low to high. And here you can really see the difference between um, on the depth control side, side of things, right? You've got some of these plants. I mean, look how uniform all those planter, uh, planter plots are as opposed to these, you know, you've got some that are coming into flower. In the back here, I've got one that's two leaf, one that's barely anything. Um, so you can really see the difference in, you know, how uniform a crop stand we can get with that, uh, with that. Yeah, same day, yeah, all the same day, yeah. Well, that's, that's kind of the thing, right? I think that's one of the advantages um, for, from a management standpoint, you know, both spraying and harvest kind of thing, right? If you have everything at the same stage, um, we're, we're really hoping to take this um, to the next step and, and do some field scale trials on it. And then we can really see, you know, if you've got a, a, a variable field um, or, or, or not a variable field, but, you know, do, do the benefits of, of management sort of compound the, the yield benefits that we've seen, you know? So if everything can be sprayed, you know, that disease window is a little smaller too, right? Everything's at the same stage for 10 days rather than three weeks, you know what I mean? Um, and again, harvest management too, right? You don't have... You know some stuff that's ready to ready to be swathed about three weeks before some other stuff so so yeah this is kind of the perfect example of the difference between them um, so yeah kind of neat to, to see that one uh, the other half of the study we did was looking at uh, we wanted to look at liquid foss uh, so one of the things with going to a, to a row crop planter because you're putting all those resources in the rows there's a little bit more concern for seed safety with with fertilizer um, so we looked at, at applying 1034 uh, with seed. Um, so for that's kind of this next one here. So for the first couple of years of the study, uh, we didn't really see a whole lot of effect of that. Um, and we went as high as, as 40 kilograms a hectare in year one. Year two, we went up to 60 because we didn't see any effects. And in that second year where we did go up to 60, we actually saw a bit of a yield bump on the, on the irrigated. Whether that's statistically significant or not is probably up for debate, but interesting nonetheless. But then this year, um, yeah, we'll just kind of go all the way to the end there. But this year, because we had, it's been so dry, so we had, a, uh, I mean, borderline drought conditions last year, um, pretty dry spring by the time we seeded. So we had, we had quite a bit of background. So on the high rates, we definitely saw some, uh, some, some FOSS damage. So you can see, here's our, here's our wider rows. So that's gonna be um, the plots that are gonna be a little bit more susceptible to that FOSS damage. So at, at 10 kilos and 20 kilos, things look okay, but we start to get up to 40 and 60 and we're really starting to see some damage. You know, these, these stands don't look as good. So we're kind of excited to see that we found something. We did sort of push hard enough to kind of find that threshold where we're seeing a little bit of damage. So I don't know, any questions so far? Going back to your um, air seeder versus uh, precision seeder, yep. where would a disc drill fit in? Would it be closer to the air seeder or closer to the precision? Why? Well, I, I don't. Well, you guys used a disc to change. Yeah, yeah, so. Yeah, exactly. So our, our air seeder, we had the pillar laser, so it's sort of a disc hole opener. And then we had. Um, so on the, on the monosem, we originally had paired discs for the fertilizer. And then this year we changed it over because 
The Monosam, the one disadvantage we found is it's not really as well adapted to the zero till environment as, as you know, we'd like to see. So, um, so that paired disc tended to throw a lot of soil around and with canola, that small seed, it kind of um, makes it tough to have that nice seed bed, right? So we went with the, with the single disc opener and then moved the fertilizer a little bit over to the side. But with it being so dry this year, we found that that pillar laser actually sort of opened up the soil a little bit more and made that moisture a little bit more available for the, for the plants. So our, like our air drill plots, that's sort of this next bunch here, they actually look better than the monosem this year, which I guess is a little frustrating, but it sort of is tied to that, that change to the opener that we made. So we thought we were making an improvement, but given the conditions this year, it being so dry, I think that disc hole opener did a better job of sort of making that moisture available. So we'll have to see how this pans out through the rest of the year, but we might have to add a, another year to the study just to sort of, you know, uh, so we can throw out the information from this year if it's, if, if it's due to that opener sort of uh, confounding things. So I don't know if that answers your question at all or not, but. Yeah. Oh, I gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's there's differences in the openers a little bit too, but really, it's all about that seed placement, um, you know, and the, and the depth control. That's that's a huge part of it. So, even I don't know if we even if we look at this uh, air drill plot here. I mean, it's sort of yeah, plants are kind of all over the place and different stages. So, and again, it, it, in the last couple of years, it's been a lot more pronounced. Um, I mean, the, the, anything seeded with the, with the planter just just looks, the, the stand looks so nice and especially early on and especially at lower rates, you know, you kind of have um, like our, our less than a pound an acre performed the poorest kind of across the board, but it, it performed the best on the, on the 12 inch on the monosem. So it does, you know, you do have a little bit more safety with those lower rates, but there's a limit to, to how low you can go with that, so. Ken and Lacombe was working with the Monosim as well. Okay. Do you, do you know you, any of the results? In the no, I, I don't know about their, I wouldn't know about their study, but, but I mean, for us, we've seen about, I don't know if I mentioned it already, but about 15% better yields on that Monosim on the 20s uh, than the air drill. And then I think that, or on, on the 12s, so the 12s performed the best in arrows and the 20s were sort of comparable to the air drill, but we also had a bit of um, compaction concerns. We've got that small seater and sort of balancing where the tires are so we sort of made some that's one of the protocol adjustments we've made to sort of make it a little more competitive but but i don't expect the 20 inch would would out compete the the 12 but probably is comparable to the air drill so and like i said we're hoping to to sort of take the next step and, and look at this some of this field scale benefits as well so to scale it up and see if you know what we found here does that hold true at a field level and and some of the other benefits you know shrinking that disease window and, and shrinking that, that spray window and, and having those rows so air can kind of move through, you know, does that combat disease? There's all these other potential benefits that are really challenging to, you know, to study on the, in this environment. But, um, and, and talking to other producers, I think anybody that's using a planter is feeling pretty comfortable dropping their seeding rates a little bit. So that's kind of, kind of neat. So hopefully we can, yeah, do some field tests on something that's sort of in that 10 to 15 inch range. I don't know, I've heard, I think John Deere has some 15 inch uh, planters, either that they're working out or just starting to roll out. The Monosem, every, every, every one of those, um, whatever, openers is mount separately to the toolbar. So you can kind of set it at whatever you want. I'm not sure a lot of people are doing the narrower rows, but I think it's well worth having, uh, yeah, having some research into it, see what's, you know, see what we can really do. See if we can boost boost yields and and you know cut our seed rates a little bit. So. Yeah, I've I, I've people have done that. Um, I talked to one person that did it, but they didn't cut their seed rate in half. You know what I mean? So then you're, you're applying twice as much seed. Um, I think you're going to get some tire compaction, but I'd I'd be I've talked to a few people and I'd be really interested to see. You know if that would do something, but. Uh, I don't know. I think GPS is great, but it's not always as great as you as you as you think it would be. I think even for us, yeah, yeah, exactly. It's uh, pre <laughs> precision agriculture isn't really as precise as I, I think we'd like to think, you know. So, um, 
if somebody could do it, I think it'd be really interested to, to see, but I, I haven't, uh, haven't seen it done the way I'd like to see it done, I guess. So any other questions or thoughts? Uh, I said, I didn't want to talk much, but no, I've been, I, you know what? I, I actually don't know. I, that little sucker probably cost us more than we'd like to admit. So, I say before all the modifications. yeah, I, I honestly I don't know. I'm not sure um, what it would cost. So, anyways, we're pretty excited about what we've seen so far, and yeah, we're just gonna I guess keep rolling with the research. So. Does anybody use planters or, or use planters for canola or anything other than sort of conventional row crops? No? No, no questions, comments? I just bought a pillar, so I'm glad it doesn't compete. Really. Oh, yeah, 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 there you go. Yeah, yeah, it's not what we were hoping to see this year, but uh, yeah, there you go. It's a, it's a good opener, though. We, we've, we've been pretty happy with ours. It's been awesome, so. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. What's that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have got, uh, yeah, a couple tractors ripping around with the different cedars. And, yeah, yeah, it's about, we kind of we kind of set her up for, for one rate and do four plots, get back to the start, change our settings. Yeah, I'm just going to say, yeah, in setting, you know, you you yeah. Do some calibration and stuff or just kind of do yeah. most of that ahead of time. Yeah, so yeah, so then then we know exactly what setting to do. We sort of yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. But no, it takes yeah. it takes time for sure. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, it takes time. So yeah, I think that's.